and welcome in to be our guest. This is John Kraft, an attorney at law, a professor at Faulkner University, and also the director of the Elder Clinic that's there, the Elder Law Clinic. A very good thing that Faulkner's done. As you mentioned earlier, it's a pro bono thing for people. And you were here a couple of weeks ago, we talked about just general legal things, but there's been an onset of a lot of abuse of elder people. If it's happening legally, you have a right, don't you? You do, and unfortunately, Jack, I mean, statistically, about one in 10 older Americans is either abused, mm -hmm. neglected, or financially exploited. Mm -hmm. Many of those cases don't ever come to the attention of the authorities for help. So there's only about one in 23 of those cases that's ever even reported. My goodness. So a lot of these are, are sort of unknown and, and unfortunately kind of fly below the radar of individuals who need some assistance and help who might be abused mm -hmm. or neglected or financially exploited. So you're right, you do have rights in the law. Yes. To protect yes. yourself and to recover assets that may have been taken mm -hmm. from you. So I mean, as the person gets older, a lot of times people try to prey on those older people because they know that perhaps they've got some money. That's right. And you know, they've retired and now maybe they're trying to live a comfortable life, but there's all manners of people from family to outsiders that try to get that money, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and unfortunately the scammers are, are pretty adept. I mean, they mm -hmm. use a lot of trickeration uh, and, and really schemes to try to get at your money. Um, and once that's happened, once, once somebody from the outside, one of the schemers has gotten in there to do it, mm -hmm. it's almost too late at that point, is it not? If they've gotten a hold of the money or can you help at that point? Yeah, unfortunately you're right. It is often too late because especially if, if you don't even know where the scammer is or right. where they are, uh, it's hard for law enforcement even if you were to contact mm -hmm. the police about something that happened for them even, even to locate where that particular scam happened. Mm -hmm. And so it's difficult after it happens to recover the money. Um, so you're much better off trying to prevent it in the first place. And that's usually, we tell people, just learn how to say no. Right. Or there's a key term called buy time. Yeah. I can't make this decision. I need to check with the person that can make the decision in my life. And you can help that to happen too, can't you? We can, and yes. so we do have clients, so we may have somebody who comes in just to do some estate planning like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And they may say, hey, you know, I got a call from somebody the other day, or I got an email, or I got something even in the mail, and seems kind of suspicious. So definitely check those things out with someone you trust before you commit to anything. Like you said, hang up. I mean, it's so yeah. hard for some people to just hang up well, on somebody, you know, but hang up, say no. You know, older people, are they're, they're lonely. So they get a phone call, my gosh, it's a communication. They're talking to somebody. And even stuff like it, Facebook, I know people who oh my fall and pray to oh Facebook scams, yes. and people who friend them there. And yes. It's very difficult to try to sort out mm -hmm. who's really being honest out there. So from a family perspective, it's, it's more rampant than I think people realize that family members will abuse. And when you say abuse, they might say, you know, I'm going to take your check and I'm going to use it to do the things I want to do. And grandma, you sit over there and I'll give you a couple of pieces of toast during the course of the day. So that's physical abuse, Yes, there can be some mental abuse, and then financial abuse. There's Correct. those three things. That's right. So the physical abuse is like the physical harm. Right. I and mean, you could have neglect, which would be not taking care of the mm -hmm. person's needs and mm -hmm. then the financial exploitation. And unfortunately, we talked about the scammers, you know, the people who you know where they're coming from. But right. unfortunately, most people who commit elder abuse are family members. So statistically, yes. more Sad than half. Sad to say. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it could be a son. It could be a a grandchild, uh, it could be someone who's close to you, a caregiver, and that makes it even worse. So your clinic works with these cases also, do they not? Yes. Along with yourself, and I, like you mentioned, some right. of the students that are getting involved in it. If one of our viewers knows about something or has some idea that it's happening, can they contact you? Yes, they can contact us. A couple things I would say is, number one is, you can always report to Adult Protective Services, State okay. Department of Human Resources. Okay. So they're the state agency who handles investigating reports of elder abuse, mm -hmm. neglect, and financial exploitation. Um, and so you can report, or if you have a friend or family member sure. you suspect is being abused, you want to report that. For the clinic, we can help do something called an elder abuse protection order. 
Ah. And what that does is it allows you to go forward and get that person out of your business. Mm -hmm. And so that's called an elder abuse protection order. That's we wonderful. can help file for that. And I, I recently somebody told me about a person that lives in a neighborhood and their neighbors are actually abusing them. Mm -hmm. In other words, like they filled up their swimming pool with this lady's water. Oh, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. in a case like that, and you, what, what can happen is if the person contacts your clinic, then you can walk them through the steps they need to go through. Right. I mean, so there could be legal action yes. that you could take filing a lawsuit. Right. Or it could be a matter of making some contacts and but, trying to remedy. But you give them the advice, that's the right. advice that they need. That's right. Well, that's good. So the clinic has been in operation now since? 2007. 2007. Yep. So you're getting some years on you. Not, not you, the clinic. The clinic is <laughs> I am as the, well. So the, yes, the director is also. So. <laughs> and of course, you can call to make an appointment. Correct. And they'll yeah. be able to see you. And at, at the same time, it is pro bono. It is. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's a legalese term, means there's no charge. Free of charge. No and charge. you'll work with one of my law students, basically, is how it works. And it's a clinical experience for Good. them as well. For us, for us to serve the community. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. And you do know that Faulkner University has been a wonderful asset in the city of Montgomery. Many, many different schools there. Of course, Jones Law School is one of the key ones. And we'll be right back right after this.